All right, welcome back, guys. Welcome back to Intellects, episode 002, Ancient Civilizations. So, according to the textbooks, civilization began around 6,000 years ago in ancient Sumer. The ancient Sumerians were responsible for humanity's first cities, along with technology, architecture, religion, and other forms of knowledge that we still use to this day. Now, the textbooks and its researchers tell the story, but new and old archaeological findings tell another, that when a question is posed to question the established teachings, they are met with negative resistance. We come from the mindset of constant growth, and we find it important to keep on adding to the story of humans, especially when we have hints, writings, and speculation dating advanced humans far beyond the established timeline, all around the earth. Today, we are only scratching the surface. So, Pedro, where shall we start? All righty, let's go. Uh, What is the timeline? Yeah. Um, So what is the human timeline? So humans show up around 3000 years ago, and that would be anatomically looking human beings. So such as ourselves, human beings that look relatively close to me and you. Um, And that was 3000 years ago, or sorry, that was 30. Sorry, that was 300,000 years ago is when they first show up. Um, Around 200,000 years ago, we see appearance appearances of humans living outside of africa i'm not sure if you knew but africa is the motherland that's where i did not that's where uh, humans come from um that was around 200,000 years ago where we see humans outside of africa um about 50,000 years ago reconstructions of climate change uh show lower sea levels resulting in an advantage period for human migrations out of africa not saying that humans weren't able to get out of Africa sooner than or later than 50,000 years ago. But around the 50,000 year ago mark, it was very advantaged. So this is where we likely see large migrations out of Africa uh, with large gatherings of people out of Africa. Um, about 40,000 years ago, around that time frame, this is all this is all relatively general speaking. They're okay. not exact timelines. It's just general knowledge. Uh, but about forty thousand years ago, humans or Homo sapiens, what we are, are the only hominid species existing. So uh, around that time, there's no Denisovians, which is uh, you know a hominid hominid species. There were no more Neanderthals. Uh, about 40,000 years ago, it was just Homo sapiens, humans, me okay. and you. About 15,000 years ago is where all the fun starts. So this is where all the, it's all, it's where all the fun starts. And the reason being because around 13,000 years ago is where the Younger Dryas theory comes, comes into play. The Younger Dryas theories is the theory of uh, of a gigantic cataclysm or an event that happens. Um, the the most likely one is that a, meteor- uh, a meteorite or something from outer space hit Earth, causing a rapid warmth of the Earth. Uh, that is what the Young and Dry's theories is. This is where we believe that the Great Flood theory comes that from. is in every, uh, I don't know, like every religion every belief every story every everything that that's where that comes from yes that that's or that theorized. that's what led that's okay. what led to the great flood so yes so it's fucking crazy every civilization every myths every religion every culture has a story of the great flood mm-hmm. and it's believed that this is where it comes from, that there is myth, religion, whatever you want to call it. It's linked to science. It's linked to geological. It's linked to archaeological now because we have signs of of an event, of the event that did happen. So that is around the 13,000 year mark. Um, 6,000 year mark, civilization begins, modern civilizations. Now, real quick, what is civilization or what defines it? Um, 
Civilization. A civilization is any complex society characterized by the development of the state, social stratification, urbanization, a currency, and symbolic systems of communication beyond natural spoken language. So really, any um, any complex society is what a civilization is, mm -hmm. and six thousand years is that mark. Uh, we'll get in. We'll get. We'll get into later of of all the fun stuff around that. Uh, 4,000 years ago, back to our timeline, 4,000 years ago is believed that the Great Pyramids were built around this time. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, 2,000 years ago is approximately Jesus' death. Um, around 500 years ago is the fall of the Aztec to the hands of Cortez. And around 200 years ago, is I, I think it's closer to like 234 years ago is... 240 somewhere around uh, the union the united states is born and the greatest country in the world greatest country in the world and now we are here uh what <laughs> doing a podcast doing a fucking button <laughs> now we're here so that's a very generic that's a very generic timeline of of the human species if you will it's crazy that uh it sounds so little it sounds so little like, oh, yeah, you know, civilization has only existed for 6,000 years. But compared to the actually vast, you know, what actually, you get what I'm trying to say. It's like, oh, it's not that much. No. We're, it, it's, it's a little bit, you know. Um, yeah. A question I wanted to ask is, what is before 6,000 year mark? What's before the, the 6,000 year mark? Yeah, so... 6,000 year mark is obviously, well, for, first of all, real quick. So the 6,000 year mark, uh, why we're bringing it up is because that's where um, mainstream science or mainstream archaeological or historians believe that that's where civilization begins, 6,000 years. So that's why we're bringing up that 6,000 year number mark. a lot. Yeah. Uh, before then... Obviously, there's been large gatherings of people before then, um, and but they're they're referred to as hunter, hunter as yeah. yeah hunter gatherers. Now, what is the definition of hunter gatherers? Is a nomadic people who live chiefly by hunting, fishing, and harvesting wild food. So they live off the land. They don't have advanced forms of agriculture or advanced form of domestication of animals. Hmm. So that is that's basically it. That's that's before that's before the six thousand year mark. Huh. That is that's kind of like a bunch of bullshit to be honest with you. I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm just straight up. It's like what? well, so we're that important. Like we're given that six thousand year mark. Well, I guess why six thousand years? Or how do I explain it? So, so why six thousand years? So. Agriculture is the main is, is the main ingredient to modern okay. civilization because with agriculture you have more leisure time. Mm. Uh, ho um, hunter gatherers didn't have a lot of leisure time because they were focused on fucking living, they <laughs> surviving. Were, they were focused on surviving, <laughs> so they didn't they they didn't have a lot of leisure time. They spent most of their time either making their shelter or hunting or out in the wild gathering berries or fruit or whatever. And agriculture is Where, pro is yeah. probably the number one ingredient for the spark of civilization to start to begin, and we find that with um, a location that is dubbed the cradle of civilization, and it is Sumer. Sumer is dubbed the cradle of civilization because it dates back to around six thousand years ago. It's the first location that we see that that's where civilization come from. It is located along the Fertile Crescent. This is a city developed between the Euphrates and Tigris River, which now lead into the Persian Gulf, which is modern day Iraq. Okay. Now real quick, uh, the Fertile Crescent was a region filled with a abundance of riches and resources. Its span was from the Nile in Egypt all the way to Mesopotamia. And uh, Sumer itself, I believe, uh, was a bunch of city states. Uh, it started with Eridu, I believe, was the first city, and 
it just went from there with uh but it was f mainly formed with city states much like rome was back then uh which eventually ended up becoming one uh italy but let me show you some pictures of of kind of here what i'm talking about so that's ancient sumer that is the sumerians yes that is the sumerians and we'll get into it, the people and what they are but this is what it is so this is the fertile crescent it's a crescent shaped uh it's a crescent shaped region of okay. of fertile and riches and again it spans from the nile uh, all the way to Mesopotamia and the rich Iran. with around the around the, all that body of waters. Yeah, correct. And this is the Euphrates River and the Tigris River. Sumer, maybe I'm wrong, or Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia or Sumer. Uh, the word in their language means between rivers or location between rivers. So, so this right here, what you're showing me, is kind of where civilization started. Correct. This, yeah, this is where civilization started. Okay. Right here, you have Sumer. Uh, Sum this civilization started in like six thousand years ago. What is to believe? What is okay. to believe? Six okay. six thousand years ago. Here, because in I'm I'm asking these because I really don't know nothing, and honestly, like I'm excited for this because yeah. I can learn a lot. So I'm yeah. just like, okay, I don't know. Yeah. So six thousand years ago, what is what is believed that um, where you know where was all the other so. It was believed that there was just only humans in that region. That's it. In the whole planet, the big planet Earth. No, I incorrect. So Sumer over here, we, here we have the Middle East. Over here, we have the now Egypt and then Africa. Africa is over here. So humans begin here in Africa and they spread all over the world. Okay. Is <clears throat> what is to be believed. Okay. Um, however, the... A possible mass migration around that fifty thousand year mark that we, we noted, uh, we we see um, a lower tides or lower lower sea levels, which which I think is where mass migrations of people went out of Africa. Mm -hmm. um, and as you can see here, this is a very lucrative spot to form civilization oh, or or for a, a large gathering of people to unite and. Here is where we only have civilization. There's people all over the world at this time, but here is where we have civilization. Okay. Again, complex society. And it's here in this region of Sumer. Uh, then we have the city-states, Iridu, Ur, Uruk, Girsu, and Lagash, uh, the city-states that form Sumer and the Sumerians, the, the people which are Sumerians. I think there's actually around maybe 12 different city states that create okay. sumer and then after sumer we see more sit ci more cities more areas popping up like babylon uh akkad and the akkadian Am empire um akkad real quick akkad is again city that came up and the akkadians were the first to form an empire uh is, is what it was and that was around i believe that was around uh i don't know maybe Four, four thousand, four, forty-five, forty-five hundred years ago okay. is when the first empire was about, okay. give or take. You know, some. I'm speaking in generalities For because sure. it's too. Yeah, you it's, can't just. It's, I mean, because right now I'm just staring at this. I'm like, so it's believed that civilization right there was just like this. That's. Okay. <laughs> that's I, I'm trying to comprehend that, and as a neutral point of view, because I don't. I am not comprehending the just you know oh i'm i'm imagining myself walking around you know <laughs> walking around and then you know going through the desert or something and then just boom it just how did it just it's so young six thousand years so this is what today's podcast is is ancient civilizations but the question that we're really asking ourselves is what was before civilization was there a potential lost civilization where we get our knowledge from because it seems that that's what the cycle is you know um god forbid you know we go into nuclear war and we wipe out the majority of the human race and we start from scratch it's that's what that's what history tells us is what it is uh, civilizations upon civilizations upon civilizations 100%. and we're just building uh, on history, top of history history repeats itself dude it, history repeats itself it does and that's really the question that we're 
mainly trying to figure out is what was before where do we get our knowledge from and is the question i feel like it's very close-minded to just say it's six thousand years like okay let's you know we have ah man there is so much to this there is um mainstream i don't know what you want to call it because you know it, it's a form of science but at the same time it's not because we're just digging up the past and learning about For it sure. but shit so, gets keep shit gets older it, it keeps getting older yeah everything keeps on getting older um yeah so fuck where were we at uh i think we're okay so oh, oh why six thousand six thousand yeah, the six thousand years so no back to your question that it just pops up yeah, the discipline yeah. <clears throat> just pop up and we will dive into that specifically fucking like in five minutes <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that that's that's what the belief so, s- systems are. Is that out of nowhere we have a bunch of mutts running around? Yeah, and then, and then we just gain knowledge, and then we just is that around the same timeline that I'm pretty sure you know where our brain size just doubles or triples? You know, no, our brain size okay. doubles or triples oh. three a per, a two two hundred thousand years, years ago. ago. Okay, some nah somewhere around that. No, you know what? Sorry. Our brain size doubles or triples when humans come out. So the story goes, we have Denisovans, we have Neanderthals, we have uh, Homo naledis. We have... Oh, yeah. Have you, have you, have you heard about Homo naledis? Uh, I'm not very no. familiar with them. That, just, the only, those are the only, the only ones besides Homo sapiens that, I'm, uh, that I know because of... Uh, uh, there's this pretty cool documentary about it. Um, it's on Netflix too. <laughs> <laughs> What's it called? It's called Unknown. Unknown. Uh, caves. Something caves. I'll post it up after. But uh, they talk about Homo naledi, and they're they're like the skeptics. This guy basically discovered something new, and the skeptics were like, "Nah, you're basically fucking dumb. You're you're, you're you know it's not true. This and that." But then they show because you know how um, us humans uh, we're kind of like the only ones that when we die we actually give a kind of like a you know like a not a Mm. ceremony but like you know just something to you know hey you know send you off to wherever the fuck you go yeah um well homo naledi was uh because they don't they they were known to do that too and people were like nah you're you're dumb you know they called this guy dumb for like years and then he started you know digging up for you know years and whatever and then they actually found remnants of of a false like like of fossils of to to you know just tools and what they would do is when they would they believe is that when you would die they would put them in these caves and then just put them down there and these caves are small super small like this like and then you know you the guy took it i think it takes 40 minutes for an actual professional guy to go through all those caves and uh and so, like, all these skeptics are like, oh, you know, that's bullshit. Like, they're not going to do that. It's probably some animal dragged them in there and what, whatever. And then they actually start finding, uh, they carbon date um, fires. So, because it's super dark in there. Imagine, you know, there's no light. You can't just take a fucking lantern, you know, whatever. <laughs> so there's no light. And uh, so they start finding carbon dating and they light up at each spot they end up. And then it seems like they're, uh, they, they have, they find fo- uh, fossils of, like, food and whatnot so it seems like they're gathering and eating and you know just putting them away to to the other life so they had they had some comprehension of hey where are we at where do we go after this this and that and yeah and these guys they actually have a a, they i wish i i should have sent you some some stuff about this but We'll t- we'll get it. it's a it's 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 so big this whole ancient civilization stuff it's so massive that it's just we just can't talk about it on in two hours or an hour yeah. or thirty minutes and these guys they actually do a diagram of them and uh, they 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 don't think they talked they don't think they talked they think really? they just they look like honestly kind of like monkeys almost you know but they are a type the home the homo naledis and it was it was uh, they grab some remnants of broken pieces they put it into the software and kind of connect it together and like yeah this is a tool they use the tool to you know is this also a th- i don't know the time frame i i you off the, the top of my off the top of my head i do not know the time okay the time. you can honestly probably look it up homo naledi um 
real quick um beautiful beautiful documentary it's just like you know uh it, it's there is you should honestly n- we don't want to get too distra- uh, distracted but like we, you should see like the cave that uh-huh. they found it's like it goes like it's called the dragon's mouth or something and, and then it, it's so so it's like you just think about like oh, yeah, life that, like that's homo naledi homo naledi homo naledi um is this also the species like I said, I don't know much about them, but I did see something. Did they, didn't they also like make beads for their dead, or is that something else? I am, I'm not gonna say yes or no because, like I said, I think I only watched it once. Didn't really, you know, look into it. You know, we can obviously 100 percent talk about the different types when we get into depth, but I don't. I think it's too much stuff that we don't really know that you know. Damn, that's but, that's fucking crazy. But yeah, uh, they uh, that was a discovery. I'm telling you this. They called this oh, guy dumb. Uh, this so according to the Smithsonian Human Origins, mm-hmm. which I don't even know if we can <laughs> trust the it's fucking sm- Smithsonian. Yeah, I know. Uh, but according to them, uh, they were between 335,000 years ago and 236,000 years mm-hmm. ago. So definitely around the same time of as Homo sapiens. Yes. Yeah. yeah um, they they talk about they talk about it being kind of intertwined and I don't know, just it's super it's all that stuff is fascinating and obviously you know I'm gonna get into getting and all all that stuff and wow it's crazy the homo ladies were crazy and obviously I don't know I, that's what makes me think I'm like dude six thousand years bro they're already doing this shit two hundred three hundred thousand years ago how you know which um regarding the same thing um so religion religion is also something that is part of civilization because it's the belief in like an afterlife or Mm -hmm. ceremonial Mm -hmm. uh the ancient sumerians were also were also dubbed with that like Mm -hmm. oh this is where they also start honoring their dead Mm -hmm. um one of the civilizations because you know you have multiple 100 yeah multiple people around but we're gonna get into it later um but you know what? We're just gonna get into it later. Sorry, sorry for going off of that, and it led nowhere. But we're, but it's gonna come up later though. Oh, 100 percent. Um, I mean, like, yeah. But where the dude? Fucking. We're, so we're talking about all these different species, and where was it going? It was basically going to the. You know, we're just starting at six thousand. The lost civilization. I don't know. It just seems like we just <clears throat> out of nowhere we gained all this stuff. Oh yes. Um. No, you were talking about something along. Our brain size, our brain oh, okay, size, okay, yes. Okay, okay, okay. So our brain size, okay, so we brought up all these different species and where they come from and, you know, hominid species. I, I believe that's the term hominid, so humanoid species. Mm-hmm. Um, and our brain size doubled or tripled when hu- when humans, when humans arrived on, when humans arrived. And so we have all these different species, uh, homo naledi, homo uh, neanderthals, Denisovans, and much, much more. But we see that evolution fits according to their timeline. But evolution does not fit according to our timeline. We have the we have our brain size doubled or tripled. I'm, I'm not sure what it is. But out of nowhere, we come onto the scene with a bigger brain and different features, less hair. Uh, we come, we humans, hominid, homo sapiens come onto the scene already advanced. Do you do you know if if let's just say the actual timeline of like let's just say the actual brain growth do you know how um you get what I'm trying to say do you know how how far we how were far, pushed yeah we were pushed no I don't but it's a hundred percent thousands yeah. uh, tens of thousands thousands of years we were it's just so advanced. ironic that's a that's ironic like, yeah maybe. I might be wrong on this, but I think easily, maybe even more than a more or a million, million, a million years is how far Jeez. we're advanced. I, I'm definitely Jeez. probably wrong with that. Maybe you add a little subtitle of the actual later, yep. mm-hmm. but we we come onto the scene advanced, and this is the same thing that makes no fucking sense. Our civilization just appeared out of fucking nowhere. 100%. Really? You're gonna tell me that we? You're gonna tell me that? We didn't know about agriculture, and then we know about agriculture out of nowhere. Human beings existed for, for what is it, 
two hundred and two hundred and sixty thousand years, you know, just wandering, being hunter gatherers, and then boom, and then. So, come on. the Sumerians, what do they have anything saying where they come from? Where they gain their knowledge? Okay, where you know, slow down there, buddy. Okay, slow down there, buddy. <laughs> let's I just talk. Finished. Let's okay. talk about what the Sumerians came with. Okay which is why we dub them the creative civilization. And in particular, it's mainly because of their technology. So we know they have, let me get this fucking picture out of the way. So we know we have, um, we know we have agriculture, right? We know we have that, but the fucking technology that these fucking guys possessed is astronomical. It's, ridiculous the technology that they possessed out of a civilization that's believed to come out of thin air so the ancient sumerians are credited with the creation or uh the perfection of for the time uh the wheel uh i'm not sure if they created it but they definitely perfected it okay. they they they're they started using the wheel um they were one of the they go ahead no uh, i was saying they bring that little you know, the agriculture, the plow. The yes. Plow. Yes. They are credited with the plow as well. Um, they are credited with one of the first forms of writing called cuneiform. It's just like uh, you have a, uten a writing utensil and you just scribe into clay. Um, and then that clay can soft clay. And then that clay can then, you know, be heated and it becomes hard. They are accredited with, uh, Arithmetic, which is the fundamentals of mathematics that include the operation of numbers. These operations are addition, subtraction, subtraction. multiplication, and division, uh, which that's ground zero. Their groundwork, you know, led to later, you know, calculations and geometry and all this other stuff. Uh, irrigation, which th they not only did they understand agriculture, but they also had irrigation means. So large largely which they were designed they were designed complex systems of canals with dams construction constructed of reeds palm trunks and mud whose gates could be opened or closed to regulate the flow of water damn <laughs> god Imagine, again they came out of uh, <laughs> dude, you, bro i'm in this i'm in civil engineering here and you're talking about all this stuff and they, that knowledge is yes no way that just came out of nowhere. this is bro, that's beautiful imagine imagine being supposedly six thousand years and just all this stuff coming up mm -hmm. that you would think that that's the greatest time to ever live and then now we got the iphone and then it's, yeah. and then it's like you know and then yeah we, we, that's fucking it's fucking crazy. So this is their irrigation system. Um, you have the river, then they made a, another canal, and then right here the that you can open and close, and then this is where there are large fields of agriculture that they would mm -hmm. have. Again, agriculture leads to a lot of leisure time. You're not For worried sure. about making a living. And this is what this is a just a art rendering okay. of of, okay. of a possible of a possibility. Um Cuneiform. They also have uh, the cuneiform script that I was talking about, it looks something like this. Let me get this out of the way. You done looking at that? Yeah. Then what did I do? Yeah, cuneiform is this. Uh, scribing, you know, scribing into soft clay, then hardening, and, you know, you have cuneiform. And that which, is a type of writing? That is their type of okay. writing. Now, cuneiform developed from... There t I can't remember the other one, but one of them was, was pictograms, which was basically drawings of an action so mm -hmm. uh, of a bowl met food or kind of like those egyptian hieroglyphs is that the same thing uh no. i don't know how about that but they kind of because it was a their pictograms were just pictures of an action that you know obviously they understood and then it evolved to a actual writing form which is this cuneiform um, their mathematics, this is what they're, again, in cuneiform like, but this is what their mathematics were like. One scribe is one, two scribes is two, three scribes is three, and so forth. Uh, 10 was like, a, I don't know what you want to call it, kind of looks like a, that, like uh, a greater than T. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, this was their number form. This is what their numbers were like. Oh no, that's 11. Greater than T. 
Yeah. Uh, that's what their numbers look like. Again, they actually... Oh, here's the plow. If I can work my computer. Here's the plow. It looks something like that. The the fir, their plow, which again, for agriculture, for growing food, it looks something along these lines. The Sumerians are accredited with that. Uh, the chariot. The Sumerians are also credited with one of the first vehicles, uh, one of the first vehicles, or if huh. not the first vehicles, a uh, a chariot. You put your animal there, and you can ride in the back of this. Huh. Again, you fuck it, man. It's you know, it's it's hard to believe for sure. So where were we at irrigation? So saws and other tools, uh, the plow. We just seen that sandals, chariots, harpoons. Uh, the Sumerians are also credited with. Uh, imagine, those, imagine those sandals. <laughs> fuck that! I fucking hate wearing sandals to begin with. <laughs> fuck. Uh, beer, beer, beer is believed. Is wheat from wheat. Or I think from... I think from barley. Hmm. I don't know what the fuck that is. Actually, I just seen that that was one of that there, and hmm. I just put okay. it on here. They were also the first to mass produce pottery, bricks, textile mills. Textiles were like uh, where they make um, weave fabric and stuff like that for clothing and whatnot. They mass produce that stuff because, in, in particular, the use of the wheel. Uh, you know, they would. Have you seen how they how uh, how they make pots nowadays? Yep. Like they put on a blob and then they just form yep. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they were they something like that. They came up with something like that. Shit. Uh, metallurgy. So very, very. Uh, very beautiful forms of gold and metals and copper work and all this stuff. And they also developed the first ruling system of monarchy. Hmm. Now, the Sumerians and how they ruled their city-states is each city-state was ruled by their deity, by their god, is what they write down. So okay. their god, their gods lived with them. And they ruled their cities. Mm -hmm. They ruled their respective cities. We'll get into their names and that a little bit later. But that is who ruled the cities. That is their first form of monarchy. It later came down to the, the a high priest ruling the city. And then it eventually formed into kings and emperors and all this stuff later, later, later down okay. the road. Uh, far, far, far past the Sumerians' time. Get this. They were also credited with one of the first time systems. Now... At this time, the world was aware of days and nights and night systems, but the Sumerians were the first ones to divide the passage of time. They introduced the passage of weeks, months, and years to the world. Out of nowhere. Um, they also are believed to have one of the first lunar calendars. So it is believed that the Sumerians were probably the first to develop the lunar cal calendar. This calendar is entirely based on the reoccurrence of lunar phases, which means the phases of the moons were used to count the 12 months. So our modern year. Damn, bro. They even fucking, they were astronomers too? Fuck out of nowhere? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Uh, sailboats, one of the first sailboats that popped <laughs> up in the world. Uh, this was very useful for their, irrigate, uh, for their yeah, irrigation, uh, along as transporting the two rivers that they had. Uh, weapons. These motherfuckers had so much leisure time that they even created a board game. <laughs> Fucking Monopoly or some shit. It looks like this, though. Probably Jenga, bro. <laughs> uh, this is one of the first board games that they... that that pop up. Hmm. How the fuck you play it? No clue. But that's what it is. Cool. So much leisure time. Again, leisure time, again, you get leisure time by agriculture. It's one of the first things, uh, as well as um, the domestication of animals. They domesticated pigs and sheeps and all these other animals. Goats. Um, yeah, that's pretty... Oh, sorry. A last thing that I wrote down here. They also came up with the first, uh, with the first law, which is... It's called the Code of Urnamu. It is... The law goes, a man must be killed if he commits murder. A man will be killed if he commits robbery. 
a man must be imprisoned and asked to pay 15 shekels of silver if he commits kidnapping. A, if a slave marries a slave, and if that slave is set free, he does not leave the house. Whatever the fuck that means. If a slave marries a native, he should hand over his first son to his owner. <laughs> Shit, uh, sorry for that, son. Uh, and that know, is man. the vast examples. There is much more examples of for their sure. technology, but that is just that is just a little bit of the technology that they possessed from a civilization appearing out of fucking nowhere. Jeez. Yeah. Dude, I can I can sit here all day and just ask and still not get answers. Yeah. Um we're not fucking done yet, buddy. <laughs> they have fucking architecture. Actually, sorry. Uh I will refrain myself for a quick second and show you examples of it. I fucking I'm over here just fucking blabbering because I got notes. So this is a depiction of this is a depiction of of uh, textile mills so a form of weaving mm -hmm. um they have a little pedal here they obviously had the spin of a wheel this would allow them to mass produce fabrics I, i'm sure you've seen it like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah i don't i don't know what the i don't know what the name of it is yeah but i know i know i know uh what you're what you're saying yeah um again they were the first to one of the first to mass produce bricks uh, it's a form stuff. of a mud brick mm -hmm. um which allowed them for construction what else we got here? Metallurgy, the creation of, you know, sculptures, jewelry, and whatnot with fine metals. This is uh, one. This is a, a recovery from. Is that something, gold? Yeah, gold and whatever the fuck this is. How do they get that gold? Through mining. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. Damn, they were miners too. Yeah, which we will also get to in their religion. Yeah, so they did this. Uh, let's see what else here. Uh, oh, we said that they were one of the first um, with religion. Their religion, we don't know what is necessarily called, um, but we find their religion through multiple different cuneiform tablets. That uh, we, can, uh, we, we can translate those? Yes, we translated them because of, uh, of a Rosetta Stone found with the Akkadians, I believe. So the Sumerians were the first civilizations and then the Akkadian civilization preceded the the, the Sumerians. Okay. I believe. Okay. Um and they wrote they wrote a translation. So we only we can only read cuneiform because of what either the Babylonians or the Akkadians um because of their translation is the only reason we can read these. Okay. And this is where we get their myths, their myths, their pantheon of gods. Uh, again, we'll get into later, but this is the Enuma Elish, the Enuma Eilish. One of the, f one, this, is, this is where we find the stories of their religion, their myths, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. their belief systems. And th th these are it right there, though. I mean, they're written, so why would it be myths, I guess? So myths is largely, is largely attributed to the belief of more than one god. Okay. Of more okay. than one god. A, a myth it's dubbed a myth because their belief to just be stories, not accredited with, with, with uh, you know maybe uh, yeah. real events. Uh, religion is mainly attributed to uh, monotheistic religion, which is the belief in one God. Okay. Uh, oh look, here's a little quick depiction of. The first Sumerian city-states, you have the Tigris and the Euphrates. This is the Persian Gulf. This is modern-day Iraq and modern-day Iran up here. Okay. Let's see. Do I got any more pictures to show you? No. Let's fucking get into these. <clears throat> the architecture. Like I said, we're not done. Not only do they have vast forms of technology, they have vast forms of architecture as well. This is believed to be, okay, look, this is, there's, so they call these temples, <laughs> they, they call these temples ziggurats. 6,000 years. 6,000 years. Out of nowhere, ago. and you build that. Yes, sir. They call them, uh, they call them ziggurats. There is ziggurats all over the Sumerian 
all over the Sumerian uh, landscape, if you will. Okay. Uh, this one in particular is called the Anu Ziggurat and the White Temple. Again, this is where not only can you worship the god, but this is also where the god ruled. This is where mm -hmm. you ruled the city from. Okay. This, uh, again, this is 6,000 years ago. Uh, the pyramids were believed to have a date around 4,000 years ago. So this would be a precursor to the pyramids. So okay. this is what was before, what, the, before pyramid. the, yeah. the biggest structure before the pyramids. Uh, not or... necessarily the biggest structure, but the 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 type of architecture okay. that they used okay. before they moved into a pyramid. Uh, according to mainstream archaeological history, science, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. Uh, yes. So this is the Anu. This is the Anu Ziggurat. Anu. This is the Anu Ziggurat. Anu, the name of the god, one of the name of the of their most prominent god, actually Anu. Anu okay. is their most prominent god. Think of it like uh, the Greek pantheon, Zeus. Anu would be, uh, you know, actually I don't know. Anu would be more of Kratos. Is it Kratos? The their father. It would be. I don't, I don't know. You know. I don't know. <laughs> you know. I, I'm. I'm drawing. I'm drawing a blank. But Anu was the greatest god. Just know that Anu was the greatest god. Okay. And this is it. Let me show you a few more depictions of the White Temple. This is. There. These are both artist renditions. Again, this is the White what a Temple. Beauty. What a beauty. This is what it would have looked like back in the day. You know, you had your city around it. You have. Uh, Houses around it, markets, agriculture all in the back. That's a fucking beauty, if I may say so myself. Uh, this is what it is right here. This is the, you have your ramp going up here, so you can see both of them. Do, does does this still uh, exist? I'll show you here, I'll show you here in a bit. Okay. Uh, this is the ramp. You go up, you can either go up a steep ramp. A steep stairs, sorry. Okay. Straight to the temple, or you can go around on a ramp. You think those ramps, it's kind of out of subject, but you think those ramps are ADA compliant? <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty sure OSHA wasn't around there to... <laughs> but the way they structured the white temple is they faced it, they faced the doors, so when you walk up it, you have to walk around it to enter the temple to like be in awe and amazed as this as this beautiful structure uh -huh. this beautiful temple this reverence you have to take it all in before you can even get into it so yeah so that's it and this is what you just asked that is that is the remnants of this okay. of this location this would be the white temple would sit atop, uh, mm -hmm. upon here and then this is the ziggurat down here the uh pyramid Cut in half, te technically, is what yep, I, is yep. the best description that I can say. This is what it is now. Credit to Toby Travels for taking this picture. <laughs> but yeah, that is in Iraq. Iraq, yes. Yes. This is all over. Uh, yeah, and again, here I'll pop up this picture. And you know, I like this one better. I'll pop up this picture again. Uh, these ziggurats, these structures were all around the the early stages of the Sumerian city-states. Okay. Eridu, Ur Uruk. Eridu is the most prominent one that you will hear. Uruk again, Lagash, you hear it as well. Uh, but I guess they're all prominent for being being uh, part of the creative civilization. Damn, what a beauty, huh? Oh, yeah. Again, information that they just possessed out of nowhere. Damn. Okay. Again, part of what makes a complex society is um, rituals and religion, um, the reverence of the dead, you know, paying respect for the dead. And they have one of the first forms, if not the first religion or myth, again, whatever you want to call it. I call it religion because it's a belief system. You know, they 100%. believe it. That's I what think, a religion is. I actually think myths is um what do you call it i i think it i think it really i think myth is really a a degenerate term because how can you how can you uh, class something as a religion something as a myth or something as a exactly how can you like if i if i believe in this you know i don't know yeah, whatever it, it's there's my belief they're, they're basically saying that 
it's no you don't believe in anything real you only believe in stories which i, I think is kind of <laughs> fucked up if you ask me so the ancient sumerians uh have have actually they do have the oldest religion which is again the uh, the enuma elish i don't know i don't even think there is a a you know like christianity muslim uh I don't. Judaism. Yeah, I, I don't think there is. You can really call it really anything because the Enuma Elish is the series of stories. Maybe okay. you can call it that. I'm okay. not sure. But their gods are the Anunnaki. Uh, is, is is who their is is what their gods okay. are? Is again, it's a pantheon of gods, more than one god. Uh, they have more or around twelve different gods. We are not going to dive into very much of it, though, um, for just because I have plans for the Anunnaki okay. at a later episode, Perfect. and we're going to dive in a thousand percent. But for now, but f- for now, that is what Anu, Anu, Anunnaki. No, so no. Anu is the greatest god. Okay. Anunnaki is the pantheon of gods, or uh, Ananu or Anunanu, something along those lines. But the Anunnaki is what they're all called. Okay. Okay. Is what they're all called. Um, so again, uh, scholars believe it's a creation myth that just depicts the Sumerian deities. The Sumerians believe that they were their gods. Uh, remember that the city states were ruled by the gods. They uh-huh. there's writings that that the that the gods lived hand in hand with the humans or with their creation. Mm. So mm. let's see. Let, let, what, what do you think that means? What do you think that means? I mean, I'm trying to think about it, like they live. Like, do you think it's just a statue or is it an, an actual person? Is it an actual just like no. a, a, a feeling? No, they lived. the The Sumerians write that they lived and they were ruled by their gods. That they Holy lived hand in hand. They seen them. Holy shit! So, if you want to, so first of all, open your mind to the possibility that gods ruled them. Okay. But also open your mind to the skepticism that you know it's natural to have with this so think of it the way that i think of it from a neutral point of view is think of it like the egyptians the egyptians ruled with uh, a monarchy system of of you know for example i I am egyptian royalty and i am to be pharaoh Mm -hmm. i project myself as a god i project myself as a as 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 a god i am a god you are my subjects so maybe maybe it can be seen in that lens as well. Not necessarily gods themselves, but um, you know, a uh, a lineage of 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 noble royal blood, and then they project themselves as as gods. But we haven't even gotten to the religion yet. Okay. So what were you we will we won't get into our personal belief systems but we were raised catholic we were raised on the king james version of version of the bible and in particular we first learn of genesis of exodus you know the story of moses noah all this we learn of all these stories that is the 6000 timeline as well yes adam and eve so Chris, christians believe that yes that um that the world just goes back 6,000 years ago. That's where God, the Christian God, that's when he created the world uh, in six days, six days, and then rested on the seventh. Uh, and then he created Which that, uh... Adam and then uh, Eve from his rib, I believe, something like that. And yeah, so they, yeah, they're, the, the Bible timeline is 6,000 years ago. Yes. Now, you again, you know of the Old Testament, um, Genesis, Noah, the flood, and all this stuff, right? Correct. Yes. What if I told you that that is copied from the Anunnaki tablets? It's a myth. <laughs> it's a myth. <laughs> well, it's a myth. We'll see. We'll, we'll see if you believe that as I explain to you the religion of the Anunnaki. But the the tablets are older than the Bible. That any old Bible it it appears to be that the old testament is copied from the sumerian religion from the anunnaki from the enuma elish from the tablets because let me dive into let, let me dive into their story so 
again, very broad story. I'm going to go by it very quick uh, because I have plans for the Anunnaki and their creation myths. So, you have a question? Nope. No. All right. So, <clears throat> the Anunnaki come from planet Nibiru. They don't, or, they don't originate here on Earth. Now, their planet is, uh, is, is suffering. Their planet is dying. And they find that by applying gold in whatever form that may be to their atmosphere... Mm -hmm. it it there it, it it stabilizes their planet and it, it it survives their planet survives so they set off on a mission to go find more gold and nibiru orbits earth every 3000 every 3600 years or approximately 4000 years every that, that's their uh orbit or it, their orbit around the sun okay so at the time frame at, at the depiction of this story, they arrive on Earth and they brought their own slave species called the Ejiji to mine the gold here on Earth because Earth is a very abundant, uh, abundant and rich Earth as we are the only species in the entire galaxy and universe that exist. So, so <laughs> sorry. So uh, they brought their own slave species called the Ejiji. And now they arrived on Earth around 3,000 years ago. Okay. The Sumerians do. Okay. They sound familiar? It sounds 100% familiar. So, so again, they, br they, they bring the, the Ijiji, their own slave species, uh, another alien species, and they mine the gold for the, for the, for the Anunnaki. Until the Ijiji rebel and civil war ensues. So great wars happen to where the Anunnaki almost exterminate completely the Ijiji the Ijiji, the, the slave species that they brought with them. Mm -hmm. Knowing that the Ijiji were were of knowing that Ijiji, Ijiji potent of the war that they just had with them, they were threatened by the Ijiji, so they almost completely eradicated them and they decided to make their own species. Okay. So they make their own species with the primates here on Earth. And at first they at first they used um, at first they used, um, Anunnaki specimen with female primates. It didn't work out. So then they used primate specimen with Anunnaki females. Okay. And thus the first man was formed called Adamu. Adamu is the first man that the Anunnaki created. And of course, for them to be able to reproduce, they also create the first woman called Eva. Sound familiar? <laughs> Adam and Eve. Nah. Adamu and Eva. They're first. They come first. They come first. That's what I'm saying. It's it's basically a copycat. The the Old Testament is a, is a mm. copycat. Or at least Genesis is a copycat. Eh? The myth. The, the myth of it. Yeah, it, it, it comes from this. So they make these slave species. Now us humans, um, they say that they created us 200,000 years ago. Again, does that number sound familiar? It it fits in accordance to what we were talking about earlier, the evolution of our brain size. They meddled with our, according to the, the tablets, they meddled with with primates here on Earth and they, they sped up our evolution. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, again, keep your mind open 100%. to the possibility. 100%. Why would I keep it closed? <laughs> and yeah, and they created us. So... Anu is the greatest, again, I'm going by really quick. I'm not going to mention everything. Okay. But Anu is the greatest god of them all. Enki is basically the god of the humans. Uh, he Enki is the god that created us. Enki is the god that modified our, our genome, that modified our, our human structure to what we are now. And Enlil fucking hated the gods. Enlil okay. in the creation myth is the one that brought down the great flood on us. Because we're humans were too noisy. Mm. <laughs> because humans were too noisy. Fuck, we're, we still are. <laughs> <laughs> now, not only is there uh, similar traits between uh, the, the Bible and the tablets, but where they lived on was called uh, Eden. They have an Eden in this myth as well. Holy shit. Now, because Enlo hated the humans, the humans started procreating on them by themselves, and 
the Anunnaki hated that. So they casted out the humans out of Eden. Now that's where in, in the Bible, um, Eve takes about the apple of knowledge exactly. and uh, then gives it to Adam. And then they're cast out of Eden. Well, they're cast out because they start uh, reproducing too much within themselves. They actually also reproduce with the EG, with the remaining EGG, the other slave species, some that survived. Their offspring is known as the Nephilim. For a later topic, for sure, for sure. but the Nephilim is also a creature that comes out of the Bible, uh, in particularly uh, the story of Enoch, which is a book that was removed from the Bible. Mm. Um, I don't want to get into it, but when was it removed? We won't get into it. Okay, okay. Um, it, we won't get into it. But okay. again, but the the biblical uh, basically they were fucking a lot. <laughs> yeah, because we were fucking a lot, and uh, yes. So again, the biblical flood story derives from the Enuma Elish, and the tablets. The tablets are, the tablets itself that we found when we when we dated them, they were about. 3,000 years old, but easily date back to Sumer's creation. So the tablets are, you know, their religion has a stamp of 6,000 years old. Now, it, it's it's ridiculous. So now now that you know a little bit of, of their religion, of their technology, I refer back to you with a question. Do you think that the Sumerians... Where do you think the Sumerians got their, their knowledge from? I don't want to say where because I don't know where, but it's just like I, I really believe that 6,000 years is too is too soon in, in, in that time frame to know all this stuff. Come on, you guys are fucking agricultural. You guys are growing crops and stuff and doing this. Like You guys have to have it. It doesn't fit with the timeline. You guys have to have that knowledge from somewhere else. That's what I think. That's and that is my belief. Yeah. And, you know, it's my belief. And, you know, I don't, it's not a, I don't know, but I, I'd be called crazy. Yeah. So let me show you uh, what the Anunnaki look like. This is the Anunnaki are basically a gigantic version of a human being. Mm -hmm. They are also depicted as uh, humanoids with animal heads. Look at this little bag right here. Okay. Every ancient society that this is this is Anunnaki, all Anunnaki. Yes, these okay. are the Anunnaki. Yes, okay. these okay. are the Anunnaki. Uh, take a look at these bags. Every so again, I refer back to the question of where did we get our knowledge from? Because it doesn't come back from the cradle of civilization. It comes from something far older. Because every culture, every religion, every people all over the world have similar stories of, of, you know, of giant cataclysms of the great floods. Uh, their pantheon relatively is all the same. You know, the God of the skies, God of the waters, God of this. And they also all have a depiction of their gods with the same little handbag here. So just, just keep that in mind. But yes, they are the Anunnaki here. Here is another, depiction of the Anunnaki here. Okay. I want you to dive in and take a closer look here. What does that look like? The, these are the Anunnaki, the Sumerian deities, but what does this area look like here? It looks you? like a solar system. It looks like a sun in the middle and, uh, or a star, a star in the middle and planets. That's our solar system. 6,000 years ago, they knew that or their gods knew that there was a sun and there was multiple planets. These planets are relatively the same size and scope if you scope it down to with the actual size scale. Jeez. Holy. <laughs> Jeez. Tell me about it. And then here's another picture of them here. Again, they're depicted with handbags, with wings humanoid figures with uh like some eagle face or something yeah with eagle heads they're depicted as amphibians uh which is like marine humanoids 
fish humanoids, uh, mm -hmm. eagles, lions at times. Damn. What, is, what, what do you think about the Anunnaki, bro? So, <clears throat> I'm kind of confused here. I'm kind of confused here about the timeline. Okay. Because we, we obviously were talking about a lot, and it's a lot to take in. So, civilization 6,000 years ago, uh, Anunnaki, is that the same that they come here at that at that time? Or we, we believe the Anunnaki come, yes, at the same time of the Sumer civilization. Again, okay. there's certain points that create a civilization, and okay, religion and, or creation is part of it. religion, creation, or sorry, religion is... Adam and Eve is 6,000 years ago. Adam and Eve? Yeah, Adam and Eve. Mm. Three? No, uh, from from the Bible or from yeah. the text? Because uh, remember, Adam and Eve come from the Sumerian sure. belief no, no, systems, no, no, sure. Adamu and Eva, as well as But what's Eden. that timeline? What's that timeline? I believe it's... So yes, Adam and Eve in the Bible were created 6,000 years ago okay. in the Bible. Okay. The oldest Bible that we have... Uh, dating back to Christianity, which which Muslim, Judaism, and Christianity all derive from the same God. Mm -hmm. they, they're they all Abrahamic religions. Mm -hmm. um, they all believe in the same God, just different methods of belief systems is what they used. And the oldest Bible, you know what, let me look it up here. But yes, the oldest depiction of, of the oldest Bible that we have is the Ethiopian Bible. That is, um, that's the oldest that we can date back the the christianity really okay yeah let, let me let me look so up here these are kind of like matching to six thousand years ago uh in in their stories so no they're not matching so anunnaki religion dates back to six thousand years ago christianity is far earlier far closer to us okay okay see that's that's where i was like but in the story but Everything in the timeline of the Bible is 6,000 years ago. Give me. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Uh, yes. Yeah, so if Google is correct, the Ethiopian Bible goes back to around 660 BC, which would be... I don't know, like fifteen hundred years ago. I think it's fifteen hundred years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, six BC. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think. How do you not? How do you not believe this? Like, how do you? How, like, as a normal person, how do you not believe this stuff, even if it's older, even if it's known to be older, and you know, be, be, instead of a, a a a religion, you know, like like those the big three in the Bible and stuff like that. How do you not? You know. Yeah. So. Is it just you? You think it's just like it's a belief? That's uh, that's that's where I'm getting to. I'm like, if I believe this, why am I? All these guys are fucking dumb. But if I believe other stuff, you you know. The the main thing is that religion can be attributed to things that did happen. So mm -hmm. not necessarily everything happened, and exactly as I said, of of course the the people that believe in their perspective, respective religions, uh -huh. uh, they do believe that everything did happen because of their faith. Um, however, they can't. Religion can be tied to real events, okay. Such as uh, Buddhism. They, the Buddha walked this earth. Um, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ walked this earth. Um, Mo Muhammad walked this mm -hmm. earth, and they can all be tied okay. back to a person, a real person. Um, I think that's mainly what it comes back to. I think. Okay. I think. Well, not only is that what it comes back to, but Somewhere along the lines, somebody said that this pantheon of gods, that they're just stories. They're not mm -hmm. real. They they can't be tied to real things. But the thing is that their gods themselves can't be tied to real things, but the events that happen in their stories can, like like the flood. Yeah. Like the flood that possibly happened because of the Younger Dryas. I don't know. I call it bullshit, to be honest. That's just... Yeah, it's, it's 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 crazy, but yes. I mean, you fucking um, show me that tablet with with our solar system. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, the fuck. I'm not supposed to. I'm not, and it's older than any written. Yeah, I, yeah. I I'm just like yeah. What? 
So, isn't that what yeah. we should kind of base off? These, or at least try to look for, or at least these, do, you know? Yeah, these people have an understanding of not only our solar system. And it, I mean, if it makes sense, how we just get knowledge like that. So, that's where speculation comes in. This can be a possibility of where we get our knowledge, of where humans get their knowledge from. Is uh, Our precursors are either our creation, our creators, or maybe the Anunnaki weren't necessarily gods or aliens. Maybe they were a different species. Maybe mm -hmm. they were something else. But well, well, whatever what, they were, they knew our souls. I'm, I'm just, you know. Yeah. It's just what, what, what kind of. What I don't find, what I kind of find, you know, like fascinating is that that shows up. That's clearly a sun and planets. And uh, like we kind of used to think that Earth was the center of the of our of the universe. What? How much years ago? You know, like not. I mean, for the timeline, I don't know. I, I really don't know. But like that was when then Galileo started looking at. The stars and this and that and and Plato is that Plato? You know, yeah. All, all those guys. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what really, you know, sets off triggers. Like, okay, these guys are barely. We're barely finding this out right now. Mm -hmm. But the, you know, I just yeah. Well, keep in mind, referring to back to Plato, uh, Plato, I believe was Greek, right? I you know what? I'm not gonna talk. Too okay. much about them, I'm not sure. He he was somewhere there, but he, um, Plato was a respected scholar, and he, I believe, traveled or he had a relative that traveled to Egypt. This is kind of going offhand, but it's in the same. I mean, it's, 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 it's in the same yeah. conversation yeah. of yeah. ancient yeah. civilizations. A hundred percent. Um, and Plato had an uncle or a relative, Solon, that traveled to Egypt. He got. Uh, Solon got so much information from the Egyptians priest that he was like, what the fuck are these guys talking about? They have mm -hmm. so much mm -hmm. knowledge of their past. They have so much knowledge of their past. And this is where the story of Atlantis, of the city of Atlantis, okay. of supposedly uh. of, a, of a super advanced human race species that ended up, you know, getting destroyed. hundred percent. And, Bro, this is so and, fascinating. and hold up, but that story of Atlantis is dated back to around the Younger Dryas, where the warm, where the where the earth yep, warmed yep, yep. up and sea levels rose, and it, it's the like I said, all these stories you can come whatever the fuck you want, myths, uh, you know, hoax, whatever the fuck you can come whatever you want, but the events that happen in these stories, the dates that the that these people themselves, these real people themselves, say that they occurred, it aligns with archaeological findings it's it's fucking crazy that you can call whatever you want but events happen well also what this is very uh surprising uh um have you seen graham Han hancock's uh ancient apocalypse I've, I've seen bro graham hancock is is a fucking national he's hero, bro. Is a he's, he's a fucking hero. Be we'll, we'll have him one day. Oh, he bless. he is the reason that everything and that, that our, this conversation is happening. I'll tell you that. Graham watch is a genius. Ancient Apocalypse on Netflix, but he, all these things on the on the Earth that they're carbonated, they just they're old. And you look at him, and, uh, and it's way before six thousand years. Mm -hmm. It's way before six thousand years. The Oh man, I I really don't want to dive into this. But then you know the the solar, the solar uh, solstice, and then yeah. everything lines up with this with true north, and you can't really get that when you're here. And oh my goodness, mm -hmm. and they build all these big things, bro. Uh, I haven't watched that in a, in a while. I need to recap. But there was this one where it's a it's on a big ass hill. I think it's in I don't know, I don't know. I'm not I'm just I'm not gonna name out. But it basically is just a big um, kind of building on this big hill where they're like, bro, these stones are so big and there's no... Globeke like, Tepe. No, I mean, Globeke Tepe is... That's or in another. Turkey. That's an, it's, okay. I'm talking about another one. And then you're just like, dude, this is this was like, I don't know, 150 plus year, thousand years ago. And I'm like... And if you, uh, it's just too much. It's too much. I, I, you, I think as a neutral point of view... 
you really can't close your mind on all this. I think you just got to keep all this information in from from everything. And just, you know, you know, if you really I feel I honestly do feel like you can be a religious person and believe in all this stuff or 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 have an open mind to this. I don't know why, you know, just believing in, in, in a certain religion means you got to close this out. That's called kind of that's kind of ignorant like you know yeah it is and it's and i mean like i i do in i do believe someone bigger as a god i don't know what i don't know i wouldn't be able to describe you i don't i don't believe it's just a, a a guy with you know gray hair just sitting watching over us but i do believe in a god i do believe in all that but i also keep a open minded to all this thing all the all this all these stuff and you know I think that religion keeps a sense, keeps your, gives you morals. Uh, don't do this. Don't do that. Don't kill. Uh, you know, don't be angry, envy, all that stuff. I do believe that. And I like it for that. And it gives me hope in an afterlife or, uh, I don't know, not to go insane. Because you sit there and you just think, oh, what the fuck happens after this? And after this, and after this, bro, I can go crazy. I really, and then religion can bring you down as a, you know, just believing in something bigger. But I also keep an open mind to all this. You have to. You have to. And then you, it goes also back to, um, I've been very, these, uh, these recent days, I've been uh, into watching a lot of stars, stargazing. I've been, since I took that picture of that Milky Way since we went to Utah, that's all I look up. And I just look up and I'm like, every almost every night i can just like dude <laughs> and then i i some i even go out in the, into the country sometimes you don't even know i just go into the country and then i'm just like dude yeah. wow and we don't get that we don't get that anymore we don't you know back in back then you could just we could stare we could stare at the sky now because you know because the light pollution we don't get none of that and i think that's what humbles us i think that's what mm -hmm. like brings us down and but us. now, but now we don't see that. Oh, look at that star. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, look at the moon. That's it. It's just a normal thing. Let's let me go back on social media. Let me do this, bro. Like, <laughs> we're not here to you know. Like, we're. It's it very it, it's very disappointing to me that like, you know, we don't think about the bigger picture a lot because of what the fuck's going on and I don't know what my friend's doing or something. Yeah. And and I think a lot of it does have to do with looking at stars. Stars humbled me. Stars that one time it just yeah. it just gave me goosebumps and I was like, holy Yeah, I, I know that feeling that and it's crazy because we've seen clear skies and you know it, within the city and sometimes the the stars are a little bit more prominent. But that that trip that we took to Zion to Utah and we could physically see the galaxy, the Milky Way. We can see mm -hmm. our Milky Way where we reside in the universe. 100%. With our eyes. Yep. That was a different feeling. It was spiritual. It was Exactly. It grounded you down. It humbled you exactly yes. as you said. And it per and it puts your mind, uh, your your thoughts in a different place. It it I don't know, it's weird. It I kind of it it makes you feel love and appreciation for everything around you. It makes you appreciate 100%. life a, that a little bit better. And I do understand what you're talking about. And these people, these people back then understood that feeling. Yes. They understood yes. that mentality. Yes. It's, it's beautiful. And Be beautiful. You know, as, may I say, and like I said, just on just one last thing about it. It's just, I don't know. It really grounds you. I really do feel like everybody should go out and see the stars once in their lifetime, once, and it will get you thinking, and it will get you. It, it, bro, it, it humbled me down to. I don't care about what people say. I don't care. Hate, envy, jealousy. That's all worthless. That's all worthless in this world. Like it. It's the best thing is, and that's where I come from. Like you know, religion. Where us as Christians, you know, that that's what we were uh, raised as. It teaches you not to have all that stuff. But that's what everybody does and everybody has. And I'm like, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful point. Beautiful point. Um, it's a yeah, fucking quick rant. <laughs> I no, I beautiful rant. I think it's 
a lot can be said from that message. And uh, by the way, you know, Zion, how we looked at, at those stars, bro, you can get that in northern Iowa here times two. Really? Like how, what we saw, double it or even almost triple it. And that's what I got. I was like, wow. And it's kind of it's kind of it's scary because you're out in the middle of nowhere in some dirt road and you're like. Well, we'll have to, yep. we'll have to go out there and yep, take yep. a look at that. Um, beautiful, beautiful note. Like I said, a lot can be taken from that message. Mm-hmm. Um, let's go ahead and stop there because I got to go to the restroom. Perfect, perfect. Um, and then we'll come back with phase two of this conversation. Let's move on to phase two of the conversation. Other megalithic structures or advanced building methods. Uh, again, uh, the question that we're really asking ourselves is where does our knowledge derive from? Where does our knowledge come from? And by looking at other civilizations or other um, other cultures around the world uh, is a better uh, a better term for mm-hmm. it. As we look at better cultures around the world, we we see uh, w- what they got to work with and where their knowledge comes. Because again, every culture, uh, every culture and people around the world, they all have advanced methods for construction, for living that after those methods were, were there and dated everything that comes after that, it's not as advanced. So again, where does our knowledge come from? Let's go ahead and start off with uh, the, rock constructions uh from the inca in in uh, uh where's that where's that peru? Uh, peru yeah in peru in uh, machu picchu machu picchu so you know what let's let's start with the pictures first uh that is my fault i did not put my shit on do not disturb sorry but let's start off with uh machu picchu and the incas and we'll start off with their pictures. So let me show you some pictures here. And their advanced method of construction, if I may say myself. What is Machu Picchu in the, or with the Incas? What is that timeline? Where does it fall in? Let me pop it up here real quick. Um, these, these examples, these examples that we're going to go through, um, again, it's very generic stuff. Um, I have plans for all these, okay. All these quick topics. I have. Mm-hmm. We have plans. In detailed. Yeah, we have plans for them in detail. Just about probably my, you know, in yeah, the Incas. And, yeah, correct. Okay. Um, I mainly just want to touch bases on these to show, okay. to show all this. the lost knowledge that we no longer have, that that we lo- no longer have. However, real quick here, uh, Machu Picchu is radiocarbon dated to around fifteen hundred BC. So three thousand years ago Ye- three three thousand years ago hmm. eh, somewhere around it. you know what not sure but it's old that is what we do know um yeah this look um this is a building method that they have that we no longer can do or if we do have the capability of doing we have no longer have implemented this in our building structures for whatever reason what is that called this is the rock formation. Okay. This is found at Machu Picchu. This this is found at Machu Picchu. Um, as this picture is here. This is a wall. That That is a wall. Those are huge. But the thing that I want to characterize on is their how they put these building blocks together. The, there's no space between them. There's no mortar used. There is... I think in some of these areas, you can't even fit a razor blade through there. You can't even fit a thin a piece of paper through these cracks. And again, it shows a lost information, lost, lost, not sorry, lost knowledge of how they constructed these things. Look how big these are compared to these people. These are stones the size of people. Have you seen where uh, Machu Picchu is at? Yeah, it's like on up. These. These stones, it's like a mountain, ain't it? These stones come from a quarry, and then they are later brought to Machu Picchu. These stones aren't indigenous to this one site. So kind of like the Egyptians and like the pyramids. Very similar to the huh. Egyptians and the pyramids. Let me fucking show you where Machu Picchu is. At. What? How did they? Uh, does anyone have any? You know, oh, how were they built? 
Machu Picchu? Yeah. Any like good theory, I guess? Um or ideas? We actually do know of a possible method of how they did this. Okay. Um talk about it here later. This is where fucking Machu Picchu is at. <laughs> Bro. You gotta take hikes up there, don't you? Yes. You have to hike Where are we it, going? I I actually do have plan to visit this site, uh, you know, go off on a quick expedition, uh, in particular for intellects to kind of get a bigger grasp. This is why I, we're only touching base, bases on these things here, because I actually want vi- to, me and you are going to visit this site um, as an expedition, not as tourism. We're going to okay, go perfect, out here, perfect. we're going we're gonna to do some work, we're going to yeah. take some knowledge. Let's go. You know what? I'll even go as far as to say as maybe we will even film the podcast up on Machu Picchu. Jeez. Fuck it. Let's fucking go, bro. Uh, ne- next year, hopefully. Um, if uh, the universe aligns, we'll go next year. But this is where Machu Picchu is at. It is on a fucking mountain. Keep in mind, you still have to take these fucking stones, size of fucking bigger than human beings, up this mountain. They co- The stones come from most of these and stones. And their altitude is pretty high up there. Or very down high. There, ain't it? Yeah, I'll fucking pop it up real quick. Machu Picchu altitude elevation set 8,000 feet above sea level and it is about 3,300 feet lower than Cusco and about 1,600 feet lower than the Sacred Valleys other Cusco uh, there are other sites around Mm -hmm. there Mm -hmm. so there is still other sites larger than Machu Picchu that show uh, according to you know at sea level um that show the same things, same um, stone or same building methods. Yeah. Uh, he, oh, look, here's another fucking picture. Look at this thing, bro. Shout out to this fucking guy posing for us. Gee. And again, their building methods, we no longer have access or we don't use their building methods anymore. Look at how almost as if the stones were melted in place and you press the other stones against them. Look at this. Look at this stuff. It, how do they bond these stones together is also a question. There is no, you can't see mortar. You can't see, um, uh, you know, tar. You, what? What? <laughs> you know, and real quick, I, my line of field in the real world is construction. I now build... I build houses. Um, I work with metal, stone, uh, wood, and particularly the you know, and here in the U.S., we build primarily with wood. And I know we now build for efficiency and cost effectiveness, mm-hmm. but the methods that we do is nothing compared to this. It's nothing compared nothing to compared this. Nothing compared to this. I mean, I I also work in you know. Uh, engineering and like the all the mathematics that you need for a type of re- rebar for the, the this concrete structure and the beams and the the foundation and all the specs you need to go through and all this stuff that's why i'm like what we yeah. need to go through all this stuff to build this and and then this exists you know you know wonders of the world that you you no longer have information about it, and then it, that's that's where I look at it. I, you know, you have to look at it like that. Yeah, look. Not just oh, you know, just built, you know. They, and then the the idea that we are more advanced because we have iPhones and computers also is like that is a very bizarre way to look at things too. It, a thousand percent, especially when. We, the the way we dis- exactly the way you said the way we describe what ad what technology or our advancements are are very different to what they yeah, could possibly it's just have. different it's it was just different timelines like yes we i understand why we think that we're more advanced because we're going through you know we're going to space and have satellites roaming the earth and and the moon and back and you know soon you know mars and you know but still like it just you know they were i feel like they were they were advanced 
in this thing and we're advanced in that thing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that we're more advanced than them or than the Egyptians or whatever. It just means that, you know, this is what we're more kind of focused on or, you know, I don't know. It's just, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, take a look, take a closer look at, at this particular picture here. Look, look at the imprints and the stones. It almost feels as if the stone was soft at some point. As if the stones or their building, their building blocks, as if they were able to manipulate them mm -hmm. in such a form that is almost like mud or clay is what yep, yep, it is yep. what it looks like to me. Almost looks like they kind of yeah yep yeah like look at this fucking thing, dude. Look, look at their precision as to how they're set down on 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 themselves. I mean, I think to build that nowadays, you need to form it up and you know pre cast it or i don't just um i think so too the i actually again uh i'm in the construction field and i tried to put myself in the scenario of how i would build it and unfortunately there, there's a few ways so we can get finishes like this um finishes like this on a side of a on a side of a building with two ways, what you described as pouring concrete is how we can get something like this, and then actually you know sketching it out. Or, yeah, you know, but then that is the illusion of it that is not actually like this because these are individual stones. The illusion of it is what we can only do. We and also tile work. We can mm -hmm. do tile work, but even then, our grout lines will be a lot thicker than this stuff. Um, and then a little closer to what I do as well, which is exterior work is retaining walls, which retaining walls is is, yeah. is, is a form like that. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but then again, like, look how, what the fuck is that? <laughs> it's a fucking nice looking retaining wall, but... They need stakes for that too. <laughs> but what the fuck is that? Look at this. On the top of a fucking mountain. On the top of a <clears> fucking <throat> mountain. The See, stones are... I told you, they need stakes. Look at that stake. Right, right stakes here? for elevation yeah. and all that stuff too. This is on top of a fucking mountain, dude. And we find architecture that let's say compare them with how it looks. It looks very similar. This is on the fucking top of a mountain. Mm -mm. We have we have uh semi trucks, we have cranes, we have skid steers, we have um excavators that help us do something as simple looking as this. Not as beautiful as that. Yep. Not as beautiful as that. Or as big, as big. Or as enormous as that, exactly. That, it's the same thing that I tell you that I some we sometimes uh, go down to the mine and all these trucks they they they're humongous, but they can only pull and carry so much. Mm -hmm. They gotta break everything down and bring them and drag them and bring them. And I'm like, dude, the you know especially going into the pyramids that was made out of limestone, correct? Yeah, the pyramids were made yeah, out of limestone. I'm like, stuff. dude, <laughs> no no way. <laughs> Um, keep in mind, some of the stones at Machu Picchu are also made out of limestone. Not all of them. Um, actually, most of the stones at Machu Picchu or around this area, um, they're more of a quartz based. So it's a lot lighter, softer stone to manipulate. But okay. still, some of them are limestone. Okay. Um, here's another, here's another example of a retaining wall. Um, again, you, you know what I'm talking about. We both come from mm -hmm. construction backgrounds. For sure, for sure. Um, the way you get these stones is two. You either pour them and make them out of concrete or some mixtures, or uh, you get them from a quarry, from a from a distributor they're, of they're, stones. They're. And again, look at this fucking stones, and you get your capstones, and you got a little fence up here. This is this is nice for modern day. It it it's nice. It looks aesthetically pleasing. This is not beautiful. It's just not as beautiful or as intricate or as advanced. The building methods we use now, they're not as advanced as they were back in the day. Look at this stuff. Again, I refer back and to how story. long this has stayed up. That's that's the other thing. You know, the amount of things that stayed up for that amount of years. You know, you look at a lot of things nowadays where they, even our roads, you know, it's just exactly. Um, okay. So how did they construct this stuff? We have, um, 
a little bit of evidence on how they were able to do this stuff. Um, keep in mind, we still kind of aren't very sure how they got all these stones up there. Um, of course, very large, very large labor force. However, through the method of acid burning or fusion is what we find. So we find these large deposits of like these um, acid ponds or acid areas. And, and again, this particular acid that, uh, unfortunately, I didn't get the name of, um, but these acid reservoirs that they use for them, uh, the acid in particular is, is attuned to, to burning this, this quartz or the silica in the rocks. So, although, uh, so although, um, maybe there wasn't a, a mortar used between here, um, the acid applied to attaching these softened, softened up the rock and man, I'm sorry, dude. I still don't understand. Like I'm trying to th this well, and this this is the knowledge that that I was researching into, and this is how they say is a possibility, bro. I just don't understand how it could be possible. So uh, how do we know that's actually not an illusion and actually a block? We've done like some 3D scanning and stuff like that, or not only have we scanned the stones, um, the backsides aren't as perfect as this. The backsides do show that they're uh, you know they're a little bit oh, wider and stuff like that okay. however what is so some of the stones are precise front back um have you fit them in um some of the stones are some of the walls are broken down and you see that what is precise is the front and where they're laid on so okay. the layer between this stone and this stone that's precise between that stone that's precise what isn't as precise sometimes is just the back is just the backs of, of how it looks. However, the fronts are precise. It is, they are separate stones. But again, like they're, I, I was trying to describe to you what they used, acid burning and fusion. I still don't under, and then the filing and just filing the stones. But then all, even all those methods, that's to what we, the knowledge we have. Yeah. You get me? I feel like we're limiting, we're limiting some things just because that's the knowledge we know and we have. How do we, do, why, why do we do that? You know, mm -hmm. how, they probably knew something we didn't know. And, you know, you get me? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it's just like, I think we're limiting it. Us as humans or who are, you know, whoever tries to depict it as how it was built. Like we can, I, don't, I feel like we just, it's just very, that's not a good way to, mm -hmm. to go about it. You know? Yeah. Uh, there was an explorer back in the day that went and seen uh, a lot of these constructions as well can't remember uh, the, the name but he did say that they did apply um a form of mortar to them or or bitumen like so bitumen uh -huh. is um is uh man think think of it kind of like tar but it is it is uh highly reactive so maybe that's why we can't see it again they they used that acid they used that acid burning they did show like you can kind of see like tints different tints in the rock uh -huh. um between these gaps but it's just, it's just fucking incredible dude this is definitely a mystery for for sure definitely a mystery for sure um again this is just one this is just one of many examples of the possibility of lost knowledge and that is the incas that yeah that was the incas and not only that uh the, the vast amount of knowledge they had with astronomy have you ever looked into that? Um, <laughs> dude, like these, the, they, they depicted uh, everything we see, like the Big Dipper and all that stuff. Um, they used a different method, but they knew what, what every, you know, they, they had, I think they, they did animals to them. I can't, like I said, but the amount of knowledge they had with this, it's like, yeah, it's it's crazy. I know the Aztecs. Um, the way that the knowledge that they had in um, in astronomy, they had these large these large uh, kind of pools, if you will. And instead of looking up at the stars, they would just look down at the at the water reflections. Oh, yeah. and they would map out a lot of the oh, stuff like that shit. as well. That's crazy, though. It is. Um, and that is the thing that I talk about where they can look up every day 
and wonder and their mind just goes all, all over the place. We Correct. can't do that. We can't do that because of light pollution and, you know. Um, the Machu Picchu and the Incas is just one example. Um, we also have the Egyptian Sphinx. My this is favorite. This is, uh, again, uh, let's not dive too deep into it because we have plans for, we, we have plans for, yep. you know, looking into them a lot more. Not only that, fuck our plans. Like, they need, these beautiful structures need the respect to dive into them with, with, uh, with more finesse. So, we also have the Egyptian Sphinx. Now, mainstream science says that it's, that it was constructed around the great pyramids as well so that would be um maybe a little old maybe a little older so that's around 4500 years ago mm -hmm. is when mainstream science says this was built we do know that it was most likely uh the head was carved afterwards because the head in relation to the body is a lot smaller 100 percent. so it's believed that this did have a lion head at some is that point main, mainstream does actually believe that or no yeah mainstream doesn't necessarily S say it but they do understand okay. that that can be a possibility okay, okay. um which bad they better <laughs> yeah but the thing uh that makes this very interesting is that the, the water erosion yes the water erosion around, this uh, along the yes um it's the mainstream say that it's you know this was built uh 4500 years ago however this sphinx does have a lot of examples of water erosion here is a picture that you can see some of that along over here these lines over here now the only thing that can make this water erosion can you take a guess what the event was the younger dryest. Yes, sir. That is what they think that would on, what they the measurement of water that would take to do this is only found back that far, which again is around that 12,000, 10,000 year mark. Now that would the reason why there is such conflicting uh, arguments about this is because that would put the Egyptian way before its time. Way before its time. And uh, this is why I said in, in our timeline that everything fun starts around that 15,000 year mark is because the Younger Dries happened a little earlier. There's, we currently don't give credit to these civilizations. It can be we're very... We're almost disrespecting them. Yeah. It's, it's very possible, if not irrefutable, that there was advanced knowledge way before the Younger Dries, which, which means that there was advanced... Uh, civilizations around the ice age and then they knew they had an understanding that something was going to happen that 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 with astronomy with uh meteorites with something was going to happen and then they took precautionaries to to make sure that the knowledge didn't get lost and maybe the sphinx is a way of not losing that knowledge it's a time capsule same thing with the pyramids the pyramids go back four thousand years ago they're believed to be far older than that. The, the pyramids are believed, I believe, to be 7,000 years ago. Um, now, this would be the work of like Graham Hancock and uh, in who he believes in, Randall Carson Randall, as well. Yeah. Um, I believe it's around seven to 10,000 years ago. Uh, the Sphinx far older than that, uh, closer to around twelve to 13,000 years ago. Um, well, yeah, because... Since it's carved as an yeah as yeah. an Egyptian and I don't know though that looks almost like if it was a lion or a cat or something yeah. you know, um, but what I just Jeez. said that's that not that pushes that pushes the timeline so back where you're just like, <laughs> and but um, I mean in a way it would make sense though, you know because I feel like knowledge just appearing out of nowhere is very un it's it, it doesn't seem right. It doesn't putting two and two together. It, it kind of seems like a bunch of baloney. Uh, but yeah, uh, here I'll show you a closer look at what those uh, water erosion lines look like. Uh, you can really see them here in this picture, and more in this one, showing the Sphinx as well. Now, do you think? Now, do you think all this stuff that? 
because I have gone a little bit into this and obviously they try to debunk this. They debunk this water erosion. And do you think it's just because it gets too much to like, or we're just going to question everything now. If we go, if we question this or if we put this on, oh no, this is older. Now everything goes back. You think it's because of that? I, it has to be. <laughs> in, um, in Egypt in, in particular, uh, it's they're met with a lot of ego and the people that do the research about this stuff uh, a lot of them are egyptians a lot of them their whole life is focused around egyptology uh. and that stuff so a lot of it is ego and not wanting to let go of that not wanting there to be an opportunity for anything else because then you're it's 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 then you're, you're a you're, fraud you're, then you're a fraud that you are but then your work is discredited and new upcoming people come up so that is a lot of it. It's so unfair. It's so unfair. I, I yeah, but I understand them though. You have to understand them because if let's just say you go to school and you study all this and blah 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 and this and that, and next thing you know, you you know, you actually find out this is way beyond its timeline or whatever. Everything you've worked for up to your career or point is is I mean not useless, but it's just, you know. So then, I, then you just become someone like, oh no, he changes the, he can't be credible. You're yeah. just not credit. You be known as not credible. So I, I can understand that, but, but it's like, <laughs> I personally can't because I find it exciting. I find it rejuvenating. If I was a fucking Egyptologist and I made, and I and I basically laid the groundworks for all these creations, all this stuff, and then somebody comes along and is like, what about this? I would be intrigued to figure out what that answer is i think but you know the answer is not going to be almost figured out in your lifetime though so it's like you know what? i'm just hang out and maybe okay so let's just say it's not them is it could it, could it also be like a government thing like hey you know i don't want none of this because i've also heard that uh people that go to egypt they get banned from the country so yeah. could it be a government thing where they're like you know what dude this is the time that's it leave it where you're like all right well it's biased is what i'm saying it's definitely biased, whether it's a government thing or not. I think, not you know, not trying to say yeah. that it's a government, but I'm just saying like maybe the government's like, hey, dude, like honestly, just we don't even know. So it it's more of a institution thing. I don't think the I think the government has very little about say. it. It's, it's more of an institute, uh, institute, whatever institute is in charge of the pyramids, the Sphinx, and all the tourism around here. They're NASA th and the Smithsonian. They're they're the I'm going I'm gonna ignore that. There's um then you threw me off. But cause that's fucking crazy. Like the Smithsonian well, I'm not hides, well, I'm not saying nothing. The, the Smithsonian hides so much fucking evidence and it, they hide so much thing that Yeah, it's it which it's it's like, all right, why are you hiding this? Like, bro, yeah. let's 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 dive into this. You know? And then the and then I think NASA even owns a part of uh of um they, of the, they own it or they're trying to own it. I feel think they do i honestly think that i don't uh yeah actually i you, you did I, show me something that maybe, i think they do maybe in the near future but we're not going to be able to visit it yeah um, but that i i think they do on a, like the chamber or something like that i don't know but, but I, that's why i said that i didn't say that because conspiracy was because it's you know i, I do think that it's more of the institute, though, however, you know, the people that are in charge with discovering all this stuff and um, the tourism and all that stuff, I think they want to they want to be in charge of the narrative. Mm. And I think it's mainly them, uh, which, yeah, is I can see that. Which, which is unfortunate. I can see that. I mean, I also heard of uh, of stories where guys go out and tour it and then they they ask the guide how do you think it was built and they just they give you flat out you know, bullshit they're, answers. And then they kind of question them. They're like, all right, bro. Yeah. They're very dogmatic yep, about the yep, situations. Yep, yep, yep. So, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I don't know. I think it's more about credibility to be honest. More yeah, than I mean, anything. Yeah. Me too. You want to be credible. Yeah. Me too. Um, so yeah, the Sphinx is evidence of a uh, lost civilization. Real quick, let me take this down because I wanted to make a quick note on the Sphinx. You said there's been attempts to debunk that water erosion. 
the only thing that can the only other thing that can describe that is sand sand erosion mm-hmm. it looks nothing like it in fact someone was presenting something to archaeologists and geologists and showed them and was giving them examples what does this look like what does this look like what does this like compare to that and he showed examples of things that appeared to be water erosion and he and he showed them to the panel of archaeologists and geologists and was like what does this look like or if this looks like water erosion raise your hand they all agreed that it was water water erosion he zoomed out of the picture it was the sphinx they all put their hands down <laughs> scholars Jeez. scholars understand that this is water erosion whether they want to admit it or not is another question damn we'll we'll end that on that me off. we'll end on that note with the sphinx however it's more likely than not that that sphinx is dated far beyond 4000 years old closer to the younger dryas if not beyond the younger dryas still um another example is the dogon tribe now i haven't heard about this Dogon. Yeah, the Dogon. Um, Maybe there's I have, a. I don't know. Th- there is a possibility. There is a a greater debunk debunking story with this. Um, however, this does fit a little bit within that conspiracy. Okay. Um, it's given. It's not. It's it's not a conspiracy, but there is conflicting knowledge. I will say that. However, the Dogon tribe is a tribe in Africa, um, that have extensive knowledge of our solar system and our universe as well a tribe yes it's a tribe it's a very primitive tribe in in africa no um, contact tribe no Does contact still exist yeah they still yeah oh, they still shit. exist okay actually here's a pretty modern photo of them as well is that them yeah that well, is them obviously. that is them now look at their look at their masks okay. and just 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 keep it in mind i'll bring it up later okay okay and this is uh more of a modern picture about them as well Okay. So yeah, just uh, again, this is their tradition. This is their culture. These are ceremonial. Their 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 dressing is ceremonial for their ceremonies. We can get into that a little later as well. However, um, yeah, it's a it's a tribe uh, in I think it's around Kenya. Might be mistaken, but it's a tribe in Africa. It wasn't contacted until a French anthropologist made contact with them. And he worked on building a relationship with the elders um, for a very long time. He had he had contact with them and he was building a relationship so they could let him into their culture and let him into their stories. For a very long time, 10 years, I believe he was working on building a relationship with them until they finally accepted him and they told them various stories. Um, traditions and facts about their culture Mm -hmm. and their belief system as well okay now the it was their belief systems and their knowledge of what they had was uh, published in the 1930s which was of sirius and the sirius system now sirius is a bright star that you can see however they knew that sirius had another dense star sirius b now this, they knew that it was a dense star, and they knew that it had uh, a, a certain el- elliptical orbit around that system. How Sirius B wasn't discovered until twenty years later in the nineteen fifties. Okay, and but we knew about Sirius. We knew about Sirius. We did not know about Sirius B. Okay, and that it was a dense star. They had the knowledge that it was a dense star. Okay. Um. They also knew about our presence in the Milky Way, and they also knew about Saturn and its moons. Okay. And this was around the 1930s is when the French anthropologists published it, but it didn't make news or it it wasn't uh, a prominent article to the 1950s, 1970s, when people started looking into it. They were like, what the fuck? These people knew about this information 20 years earlier. Far earlier before that, because again the anthropologists yeah, yeah. were working on building a uh, building um, uh, a relationship, relationship with them. So now, where it gets interesting is that the Dogon claim they received their knowledge from amphibious beings called Nomos. These Nomos, these amphibious beings, came and made contact with them, and they gave them the knowledge that they had. Now, these amphibious beings can be found 
here as well. The ancient Sumerians Holy are also described as being amphibious beings. This is a picture of them. And they have these artifacts or they uh, gave it to them or or what, what? what is this? This is just a connection. This is uh, Sumerian origin of amphibious beings. Uh, it's just a connection. They're not saying that the Sumerians okay. gave them the knowledge. Okay. Okay. Uh, they call those entities Nomos. Nomos okay. is their oh, names. Okay. Now, uh, I told you to keep in mind about their um, masks, masks and their dressings. Mm -hmm. Their one of their ceremonies is revolved around this event. Now, the knowledge that they possess, uh, they don't necessarily write things down in a history book. Mm -hmm. They just pass it down elder to elder mm -hmm. to elder uh, through the word of mouth. And their, their um, celebrations are depicting the events of the Nomos, of the Nomos making contact with their tribe, giving them knowledge and resources and information. And they still follow it to this day. They still celebrate the same celebrations. They still tell the same story to this day. Beautiful. Beautiful. Again, it's a possibility of higher beings or more advanced beings. For sure, for sure. Uh, potentially giving knowledge. Now, I say that this kind of fits into a conspiracy because there have been attempts to debunk this um, because they only have knowledge or they only record knowledge of certain things. There is, for example, they don't know about the other planets in our solar system. Um, that's basically it. Um, people say that the French anthropologists were telling them all this stuff, and then they told the, the the tribe to recite this information. But even then, what would the anthropologists stand to gain from this? From, you know, say this, I'm going to record you saying this, and then publish it. Because the anthropologist never pushed this agenda. He just published his paper in the 1930s, and it didn't become popular till the 1950s, 70s. Hmm. And then he never wanted, he never made a career out of this story mm -hmm. is the thing. So it's one of those things, you know, take it, gonna say, uh, take it with a grain of salt from me, do your own research, but it's a very, very interesting topic. Huh. Uh, can you pull up that picture of the Nomos? Is that what they call them? Nomos? Uh, yeah, the Nomos. The Nomos. Zoom into that stuff. Let's see. Of these and famous, uh, this, yeah. I just want to see how, like, uh, hmm. yeah, uh, like I said, I believe this is from Anunnaki origin, but the Anunnaki were often described as you know, as uh, humanoid figures with animal like, um, with animal like characteristics. Now, again, this is just tying two two to two together um so there's really nothing incredible to this okay. it's okay. just one of those things that all cultures it's one of these things that all cultures share a share share a story in reality they all have characteristics that resemble one another this is actually what they knew before we knew with modern with modern technology they we know about Sirius a and we know about their orbit. Oh, sorry, we did not know about their orbit and uh, that it was a super dense star. We knew about this. We did not know about this. Huh. Until we discovered it 20 years later. <laughs> and they already knew that, though. They already had they the... Had said it. Yeah, they had said it before this became known. Genius. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about it. Um, I had those confused, bro. About what? Uh, I, th I had those confused. I didn't think, uh, I didn't know it was a Series A. That's what they were called, Series A and Series B. I thought it was like Alpha Centauri. Alpha Centauri. That's different. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. That's different. That's uh, but yeah, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, um, it's, I've looked into the those dense stars and it, they're very hard to, they're very hard to like to shoot with a telescope mm -hmm. because it's they can hide it, it i don't know i don't know the actual terminology for this but they can just kind of hide and you won't know until 
you it's just weird it's weird how how they can depict those but yeah. it's pretty cool it's pretty yeah. cool uh pretty cool stuff yeah so again that's just another example of lost knowledge of lost civilization of who the fuck were these nomos mm -hmm. um but it doesn't stop there <laughs> we go to probably this event this site is probably going to be the event that finally rewrites history and i'm talking about globeki tepe now why is this going to rewrite history because this is one of those examples of what you said everything keeps on getting older our understanding of civilization our understanding of the human timeline is not what we believe it to be so everything gets older globeki tepe dates back to at least 9500 bc that is 11,500 years ago at least globeki tepe is amazing this is amazing now keep in mind it dates back that far we haven't excavated nearly anything you know how much we've excavated from i think uh, i can't remember the percentage but it's like nothing guess <sighs> an eighth five percent we have uncovered 5% of Globeki Tepe, and we've only dated that 5%. Now, we, there are signs that this site was deliberately covered up, that was, it was deliberately buried. Now, this site also shows resemblance of alignments, that these big structures, I'll pop them up here in a little bit, but these big structures are aligned with, astrono with astronomical locations including Sirius. Oh, really? Including Sirius. So, yeah, so it's <laughs> it's one of those it's I repeat myself again. All civilized all 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 cultures share the same story. Just different words, different names. Uh but this is I don't know, it's fucking crazy. Let me let me pop up some pictures of Globeca Tepe here. Oh, these the all these stuff for sure are things that you just it's one episode about this. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's, it, on all we can spend again, we can spend a lifetime <clears throat> on one subject and not uncover the full truth of it. hundred percent. So this is Globeca Tepe uh when it was being excavated by a German I don't know. I don't know I don't know about it. Okay. To be honest with you. Oh, uh, why did this? Do you know why they started excavating this part? Or yeah, a, a fa uh, so these pillars are enormous. These pillars are enormous, but Globeca Tepe uh, stands for hill or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, this is in Turkey, right? Or, yeah, a belly hill. Yeah, it's in Turkey. It stands for a hill, and these pillars were sticking out, were sticking out of the ground, and a farmer noticed them, and he. Uh, he you know reported that there's something here a while ago actually and excavation didn't start till 19 something 1970s 1990s maybe i don't know something along those lines but ex uh, we knew about this far far long and then it wasn't until the till the german scholar came in here and uh and finally excavated this but yeah this is what this is what it looked like back in the day when they started excavations it does now have um it does now have a big dome. You're gonna like this picture. It does now have a big uh, dome <laughs> over this. Little guy surveying it. Yeah. This guy surveying something. But yeah, it does hey, now have a big cool to survey that. a big uh dome used for observatory, but it's mainly used for to protect the, the site from, from And are they still excavating that site or no? You know, I can't. Get stop. You, I that can't, guy looks like he's working down there, and there's tourists just looking at it. Yeah, I can't get you an answer on that because <clears throat> what we find with this structure is that it's again, this is uh, it's Globeck Tepe stands for a hill, mm -hmm. so it's on a hill, and then there's things kind of underneath it as well. Oh. So it's it's a giant. It's in it's an enormous structure. We've only th we've only uncovered five percent of this. It's an enormous structure. Um. So I, I don't know. I don't know if we're still um digging this place up or we're currently just trying to understand everything of what we currently have um but yeah 
This is actually a uh, artist rendition of the actual thing of back in the day of what it looked like when they were building them. Now again, these structures are enormous. Look at this. They're yeah, 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 yeah. many times the size of a of a, of a human. See, you see, <clears throat> me understanding kind of a little bit of Glebecki Tepe. This, you know, the way it's being built or the way they think it was being built, or whatever, is amazing. But the actual meaning that every single of those pillars and what it was actually used for is what blows my mind. You know, yeah, the construction is, you know, not to underestimate it, but the construction is is amazing. You know, you still wonder. But the meaning that and where they place this stuff, you know, uh, that I look at it, the the kind of like the engineering part of aspect, you know, where they knew they had to place this and what they were and what the meaning of the whole site, which I'm pretty sure you're going to you're going to talk about it. That's what fascinates me. I'm like, dude, how did you guys know this 11,000 years ago? Yeah. <laughs> um, this Gobekli Tepe is also, um, there's remnants of something spiritual as well. So it pushes that religious, that religious oh. belief further than the Sumerians. <laughs> so it's fucking yeah this this is this is why this is the site that's going to rewrite that's finally going to rewrite history to, because now it's actually evidence you you can't deny this you can't and again what did i say is part of civilization agriculture agriculture is part of agriculture is what gives civilizations the 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 luxury of leisure time so the luxury of leisure time means that they have to spend that time elsewhere and they spend their time in this doing this. Damn. Damn. There is there around this site there is also actually you know what never mind. Do, I don't know. We don't know the civilization or the the people that made this, right? Mm. Or we don't have a a good honestly guess. They associated uh, something around this, but it's all kind of bullshit to be honest mm -hmm. with you. They don't. We we truly do not know. We truly don't know. Jeez. Um, people currently modern, you know, the establishment, if you will, they don't necessarily recognize it as another a new point of origin. One because they think that there's not enough evidence. Two because there's no signs of that this was used to live here. Um, and that's basically that, that those are some of the reasons now. Ah, fuck. I lost my, I lost my train of thought. Um, basically of, um, uh, we were talking about oh, like why, who, why they don't give credit to them. Or so who was associated to, you know, yeah, the association is honestly bullshit. I'm mm -hmm. not even going to say it cause mm -hmm. it's stupid, but <laughs> it's a myth, but, <laughs> but. But again, the establish the establishment basically says that they they need to give more credit to hunter gatherers. That this isn't oh the remnants. God. That this is not the remnants of an ancient civilization. This is that they need to give more credit to hunter gatherers. That maybe hunter gatherers had more leisure time that than than what they thought. Huh. Um, and they also knew about astronomy as well. So damn. Yeah, it's, it's Jeez, yeah, bro. it's it's very in in this in this. In this particular site, it's very lazy to make these claims 100%. without without at least having more than 5% excavated. Now, here's a quick thing that was found in Gobekli Tepe as well. These little handbags Whoa. that are also found in Gobekli Tepe. Again, this is <sighs> back to that all cultures oh share the same story and all cultures share the same knowledge. Bro, he has... <sighs> Again, and that that's an animal on something on a. Oh my god! These um, modern they do believe that their spiritualness is based off of something related to death. It's inclined more to death. Their whatever their spiritual is, uh, because of the multiple vultures that they depict all around the site. Uh, of course, vultures is associated with death because <clears throat> they're scavengers. Yep. They scavenge their 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 presence is around death. 
But yeah, this bro, that bag is everywhere. <laughs> Anun- or these, whatever it is. These Anunnaki, these bags are depicted with the Anunnaki. They're depicted with the Aztecs and Quetzalcoatl. They're depicted everywhere. Every culture has have have these has these bags. And that and we go back to that uh, ancient apocalypse, where, dude, Graham Hancock does an amazing job of giving you all the information, and then at the end he gets, he basically's like, yeah. They all say the same thing about a, some about the almost the same knowledge, and they all almost have like the same type of architecture or you know construction things that we don't we we don't know how that how it was made, whether it was pyramids or whether it was this or whether it was that, and they all talk about the same thing, and it's all cro- across the world, so. I know they didn't have phones or supposedly <laughs> how, how do they communicate this yeah. throughout all the different places of the, of the world. You know, that is what's crazy. Uh, quick, uh, a quick note about that is that at all these cultures have uh, a story that after this flood occurs, a figure or a figure or someone appears to bringing bring the knowledge the knowledge the yeah that well that, yeah. that's what i'm that's what i was talking about that's exactly what i was talking about about someone bringing the knowledge and it almost makes sense mm-hmm. you know there's literally pyramids in mexico and egypt you know all over the place and they didn't have no communication in some sort of way uh, whatever thousand years ago yeah yeah, it's uh like I said, we'll we will definitely dive into these other topics Ordinary. at a at a later uh, at a later time, but that's all I got. <laughs> I don't even want to finish. I know I, I don't want to finish, but I don't know. I it, it's all this stuff that it will come more in detail and it, I like I said, I feel like open you have to have an open mind whether it's you know i I don't think religion should close you out if that's the case i'm not saying that's the case but i don't think that should close you i don't think any of this should close you out and i think actual having you know beliefs doesn't need to mean that this thing doesn't exist all this stuff isn't a possibility or doesn't exist you know there there is uh you know i mean uh, the, the bible and religious stuff is also stories too though you know just same thing as you know the tablets and this and that that's all those are all stories so it's just like you know how that's kind of kind of you know Mm -hmm. hypocritical yeah in some sort of way yeah it's uh it's it's a little bit of everything it's uh religion has um a, a, a play modern uh teaching schoolings uh science again whatever you want the establishment has a big a majority of the say as well you think they almost all do you think they almost i almost believe that they work together hey we're gonna go with this we're gonna go with that we're gonna go with this you all, you all okay they have a board you guys okay <laughs> yep, yep 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 all right let's leave it at that and boom it, it almost seems like it the illuminati what a coincidence no not no not the illuminati but like like uh scholars and uh religion uh and all, like the high no i'm not talking no like conspiracy stuff but like you know like like let's just say uh the highest of people of each religion with like the highest of people of every study and all this stuff can probably it almost seems like they just sit down together and be like yep yep we're gonna go with that we're gonna go with that yep yep all right that's it yeah it definitely does seem like this especially it's, when what a coincidence what a coincidence <laughs> you guys all your timeline you know adds up and but yet we find all that shit that does not correlate with your timeline and, and you know dude i i fucking swear bro i don't understand like i don't understand what why it's so important to keep that. their fucking agenda like it's and th- and this is why i say that it's it's vital that we we as humans we understand where we come from we understand what our history what our past yeah. is we understand where our knowledge come from it's more exciting to to know all that stuff than to just oh we already know 
Oh, we already know that. Oh, they're We're not, not going to question that. They're not capable of doing that stuff. It's, yep. it, it sucks. It sucks that that's uh, the, the type of world that we live in. But luckily we have uh, heroes like Graham Hancock, like um, Randall Carlson. Um, it's it, And just everyone that, that brings them up, like we, well, there's there should never be, uh, you know, you should never shut anybody down, whether they're right or whether they're wrong. It should always be like, all right, let's conversate, you know? Exactly. And have open minds to this and not shut anybody down. Just kind of like, uh, you know, we'll get into it, but like, you know, when was it, who was it, Guy Lowe or something that had that that theory and then even the Catholic Church you uh, know, yes. sh- shut him down? You yeah, know? Gal- Galileo started uh, started looking at the skies yeah. and everything, and he was very excited to bring... And he he, he gave... That's new information yeah. at that time. And then they want to shut him down. Like, why? Yeah. And so it's it's just a lot of things that you kind of, you know, think about. And you're like, man, we... All we got is ourselves. We're on a planet going through space, wherever the fuck we're going, you know? So it's like, why don't we all just work together? That's yeah. the best thing to do. But we're human beings. We are uh, egocentric and jealous and envious, fucking yeah, we're def- monkeys. We're we're definitely a very beautiful species, but at the same time, very ignorant mm-hmm. species. But yeah, alrighty. I think well, that that's, was it. Uh, that's it for me. Perfect. Uh, everything for you? Yeah, I think so, man. I can't wait to dive more into this stuff. I, honestly, yeah. this was too broad. Yeah, I, this broad. whatever two hours or whatever just went by fucking fast and i'm like what the fuck am i gonna do <laughs> i know what the we fucking all righty yeah. well yeah uh thanks everybody intellects episode zero zero two ancient civilizations stay tuned thank you